Hi, I'm John Creason, and today I'm going to show you my story Bible. I'm a discovery writer. I like to write paranormal young adult fiction. I've been using Pseudorite for over a year, and I like it because I can lay out my rough draft very quickly. When I start using Story Bible, I will use two projects. One project is to hold the complete story. The other project is to hold the story as I'm writing it. So I will use the system to uh, create a quick outline. Uh, I like using the um, story circle outline because it's very clear as to how it delineates the acts and uh, for shorter fiction it's easier to control. Um, but one part of this control is that when I go back to actually write prose I don't necessarily want all of the book in there. So I will start with just the first chapter in my outline so it doesn't know the future of what's going on. But then I need to read this first chapter, and there's things about it that um, I don't like. Longing for freedom to express her individuality. Things like this are going to trigger a lot of thinking about the end of the book, and I don't, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a very different character at the beginning in chapter one versus what I end up with at the end, including what the character longs for. Um, so even though it's going to be there a little bit, I need it to be different. So I had to change this uh, comfort zone into a discomfort zone. So I turned it into the zone of discomfort. And I needed to cut out as much hopefulness as I, as I could. Um, but I also wanted to uh, sort of expand it a little bit to make sure that I can uh, tell it exactly what I'd like to have happen in this chapter, but from the perspective of this chapter, not from the perspective of the end of the book. Now, when I use Story Bible um, and I go through, so here I am in my outline with just this one thing, but I can use this synopsis here in the uh, synopsis itself. So when I'm writing that first chapter, uh, I don't want the synopsis for the entire uh, book. I just want the synopsis for the one chapter. And then I can generate characters built for that single chapter. And so I use uh, the generate character I add my custom instruction, mostly just telling it that I want Adelia Oddball to be created. She's my protagonist. Um, and it, I have a, a couple of extra uh, traits in here in, in my character traits, morbid fascination impulse, the stare into the void trigger that she has. I also give her a fetish uh, background and personality are in there, physical description, dialogue style, super important. Um, this really keeps the characters having a very unique voice within the context of the, the story Bible. Uh, and I also have a hidden wounds. Now, again, I had to go, I got rid of goals and motivations at this point because I'm not wanting to telegraph her goals and motivations yet. Uh, I had to get rid of a lot of hopefulness that was in here, right down, make sure she has intense feelings of worthlessness. Um, she often uses quirky idioms in her speech, but it's important again that, um, you know, this, this as if trying to contain something wild within that was on the border. Uh, I said, okay, maybe that's okay. I can leave that in. Um, but again, this character at sheet as it's drawn up for Odelia oddball. And at the moment, if you look, that's the only character I've got in my scene. And that's the only outline I've got. Uh, and then when I run my uh, prose off of this, it's going to know about these things. And that's it. And so when I get up here and run prose, it comes out in a way that uh, makes me 
a happy and it, it doesn't um, it doesn't drive me nuts. Here is my story Bible. This is the story Bible that I'm using for writing chapter one. You see my brain dump. I don't have anything in it for chapter one. Uh, the most important things uh, for writing in this is going to be genre style and characters and world building. Uh, but my genre is uh, simple. My style is precise. Uh, I enjoy the kind of text and prose that I get out of here. I'm incorporating a lot of dashes uh, to enable me to get all this into 40 words. Um, you can also use styles that just use words like this uh, by themselves. Um, oftentimes, a style, uh, it, you do, it's good to have what you want in, in terms of past tense, third person, if there's a POV character, if it's first person, um, it, it is good to have that stuff in here. Uh, but then the rest of it could be quite stark. It could be something like lyric voice, or it could be, uh, but you know, what I'm really going for here is a snarky feel to the entire thing. Uh, and oddly enough, I didn't use the word snark in here, I don't think. Um, but it's, it's a good one to go to use in here as well. So genre and style are here. Uh, my synopsis is focused on my first chapter. Uh, I did that so that I could write characters or create characters. And like, if I look at my uh, characters, you see the characters looks at synopsis. So that's why I did it that way. So I'm creating characters for my first uh, chapter. And the only character I care about here is the protagonist. I'm trying to layer in my characters one chapter at a time. She meets all of her friends one and then the, the, she meets the first friend. Then in the second, third chapter, she meets the third friend and the fourth chapter, she meets the fourth friend um, so that it builds up uh, across the book. And uh, so I don't even have the, the antagonist laid out here. Uh, and that's okay because it sometimes while it's running will invent antagonist or uh, mean girls or something. And I'm, I'm happy with that. Now my outline, uh, again, I've restricted to just chapter one. Uh, it's the same text here that I've got up there in the synopsis, which is where I generated my character from. Uh, the reason I do this is that if I'm creating prose, it doesn't see the future. It only sees chapter one. And so in order to get started writing, you only need to know the chapter that you're writing. Um, if you, if you're working off a later chapter, it's good to give it some information. Like previously this happened, this is important. And these characters are, are the good guys. And these characters are the bad guys. That kind of previously information can be part of, uh, the chapter description. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite useful there. If, if you're writing a standalone chapter further down in the book, you just need to give a little bit of context about what it is came before that it needs to know about to write this chapter. And then this chapter is what you're focused on. Uh, also, if I'm writing the first chapter, then the second chapter, I'll often build them up so it can see behind, but it can't see forward. Uh, and then now there's also world building. So when I created my uh, entry, it generated my entry. I wanted to generate the Outlier Academy um, for this location, just so it would nail it down. And this is what I'm trying to advocate is that get the first chapter, work on the first chapter, make it be what you want, and then nail down what it is in these elements. So this world building, isn't something that you might invent before you start writing, but it's something that you keep track of while you're writing. So I'm using world building and character information uh, to be discovered along the way and added in. Now, if it's going to be characters that are important for the entire book, and I want them to start in certain places, then uh, as I get to their chapter, I will generate a character for those characters and I will go through and 
look for stuff and try to pull anything out that just telegraphs where the character ends up. So when I first introduce the character, I want to start with where the character is right now. I want to rip out anything that refers to the future. I am John Creason. I'm a discovery writer. And that is how I use the Pseudorite Story Bible to keep track of what I'm writing and how I'm writing as I'm writing with Pseudorite.